patients come to me all the time to talk about specific diets. I think this culture of wellness has absolutely exploded, and I think it is a fad, um, and these things all ebb and flow, and I think over time, um, this whole wellness culture will sort of die down a little bit. Every day there's a new fad diet. I don't think this is necessarily a bad thing. I'm, I'm happy that people are more focused on their health and that it's becoming trendier. Um, but you have to be careful. You know, there are some issues with certain diets. You know, you don't want to develop B12 deficiencies and folate deficiencies. And, you know, everybody going gluten-free is not necessarily a good thing because there's high glycemic index in a lot of the foods that are gluten-free. Not everybody should be dairy-free. You know, there is definitely a benefit to dairy in terms of the bones. A lot of patients are going on the keto diet, and I have mixed feelings, more actually with my type 1 population, or the patients who are predisposed to ketoacidosis. It's when your blood becomes more acidic as a result of breaking down fats, um, and it's a, one of the complications of diabetes, both type 1 and type 2. And I do have some concern about my patients going on diets that predispose them to ketosis when they're already at risk for t ketosis. Um, but then, of course, there are all the other fad diets. There's intermittent fasting. Um, you know, I think that with the correct patient, intermittent fasting can be fine. For other patients not eating for that long a period of time, if they're, let's say, on a background insulin, we call it a basal insulin, can put them at risk for low blood sugars. And I'm glad that my patients are asking me about it rather than simply launching, you know, all these diets without a discussion. When I'm counseling patients on type 2 diabetes, I generally ask them to imagine that they're traveling anywhere in the world that they're at any restaurant, any party, and that they're able to create a balanced plate given a variety of options. So I don't like to create a very restrictive diet for patients because I think the key to not feeling um, as though you're constantly under attack is being able to figure out how to eat with the food that you're given. I, I truly believe that you can go to McDonald's and make a diabetic balanced plate if you try hard enough. They have salads there, they have yogurts that are not high in sugar. The way that I practice is I do not tell patients you are going to be eating kale, you know, with every meal, you're going to cut out dairy and gluten and, you know, create these diets that are really unsustainable. I also think that sometimes desserts become the elephant in the room if you never allow it and we need to be realistic that desserts are pleasurable. Alcohol is pleasurable in moderation, and so that you should give yourself cheat days. You know, you may need to take a little extra medicine that day, and we account for that in our visits, but um, if you try to cut out something that's so pleasurable forever, you're never going to succeed. I do think there is a specific type 2 diabetes diet, but the ground rules are general. So we are minimizing starchy carbs. That's the basis. Ideally, 15 grams that may not be realistic per meal, maybe 30 grams of starchy carbs per meal, but understanding what starchy carbs are, knowing that if you're having your fistful of pasta, you're not also going to have your bread, that is key to the diabetic diet. Adding in proteins to meals I think is very important. It prevents you from having a sharp spike in the blood sugar, it allows it to be a little bit more gentle. Making sure that patients are having healthy fats, so the monounsaturated fats, more avocados, more nuts, more olives, I think those are all important. Um, that is the diabetic diet, but it, it's not to say, you know, you will never have fruit. I mean, fruit is part of the diabetic diet. Um, we try to minimize juices, but you know, you can occasionally have a juice. I think the diabetic diet should give you some leeway. You know, it shouldn't be set in stone because that really causes patients to panic. I think there are just a lot more opportunities for healthy eating now. There's so many meal delivery services, at least in New York City. So many of my patients are ordering in meals that they can cook themselves that are already carb controlled. There's such an abundance of information on the internet. There are recipes everywhere you look about carb controlled diets. So it's not like you have to go to the library anymore. You don't have to search out this information. It's absolutely everywhere.